Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to create a retopology of a complex image like this. As you can see here I have um, quite a few faces and tries and that's because of the sculpting I've done. Um, or I mean not sculpting, this is just a 3D image I took of my torso and um, tried sculpting a head on top of. Um, but what I'm going to show you how to do is my method for retopology. I've, I've tried a, quite a few methods for retopology and I found that this one is the quickest. I'll go over it quickly, um, just real quick, first hand, um, to tell you what I'm going to do and then I'll just show you what I'll do. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane and it's going to sit in front of um, this character. I'm going to mirror the image along the axis and so that it whatever I do here will create here and I'm gonna create all these details in his torso but I'm gonna create them flat um, what that will allow me to do is um, I'll be using a modifier the shrink wrap modifier in a special way to pull that over his body and then you'll be able to see the details come in so I don't want this tutorial to be too, too long so we'll just get right back into it first part is I'm just gonna center my cursor back on the origin. I'm going to add a plane and I'm going to rotate that along the x-axis by 90 degrees so that it's just flat. Using the number pad I'll look at it on, from this side and I'll grab that and I'll just put it wherever I feel like it, probably right there. Um, you could use any uh, shape you wanted to. Basically the way I do it I just like to delete it down till it's just a point. So now I will add a modifier to this, the mirror modifier, and it um, we're going to be messing with this clipping option back and forth. The x-axis is what we want it merged on. Um, now we're pretty much just going to do all our work through this viewport here. Make sure you have your orthographic mode uh, enabled, meaning that there's no depth of field, that when you're looking at this character it just looks like he um, he just looks flat. You don't want to have any perspective on it all. And we'll just get right into it. So you tab into edit mode. I like to delete all but one vertice to start. Then I'll grab this guy. For the first few points you're going to turn clipping on. And as you can see, um, sorry my computer goes a little bit slow while I'm recording. But as you can see, now no matter where I move my mouse, that point stays right in the middle. And so I'll just, it seems like a good spot to start. I'll turn clipping off, and then you count. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to go up four. It's making a rough um, square. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but I I like to think of it as a as you're making shapes. You'll see what I mean in a second. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. I'm using more detail in the areas where there's a more curvature. Right here around the side of his pec, there's a lot more movement than there is right here where it's relatively flat. And then I'll just go, I'll turn clipping back on. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I have a vertice that's floating. Um, so I grabbed it, it was just stacked on top of that one. One, oops, one, two, three, and then to make the last one, shift click to select both of them, press the letter F, and it creates a face. Um, I'm going to drag this over to the middle so that it clips right. And I'm just going to kind of tweak these a little bit so they fit a little bit better, and more how I want them. And now I'll go one. Come on, computer. It's slow with the, uh, um, the, uh, with what I'm trying to do here. So you see that I have five vertices selected here. 
and I'll go one, two, three that aren't selected, one, two, three that aren't selected, and because we counted, two, three, four, five, and as soon as those select, come on, computer catch up. See, okay, perfect. Oh, what had happened? Right click to cancel out, whatever that just happened there. Now what we'll want to do is we'll want to grid fill this. So I don't know where the grid fill is. Maybe one of you geniuses in the comments below can tell me where it's at. But I always just spacebar grid fill. And it'll create a grid like that. Now you can just repeat this process again and again to create the different areas of the body. Um, I, for this tutorial, I'll probably just do the pecs and abs. Um, faces get a little bit more tricky. Uh, maybe I'll upload another tutorial where I'll do a little bit more on the face, um, probably with a face a little bit more detailed than that. But uh, for now, after I have a geometric shape, I try to find another geometric shape that I can start from. So I'll just duplicate this vertice to get another vert, and I'll drag it down. Another thing is, I like to keep my um, all of my polygons uh, quadrilaterals. That's simply because when, if you were to animate it, triangles tend to bind, and so uh, quadrilaterals do a better job at animating. Um, it's not a proven rule, or uh, sorry, it's not a, a hard set rule, but it's good practice to get into. And so the way I see it, we've got maybe, so you notice I turned that clipping off, and then I'll create a face right there. That'll be part of this ab. And then I'll bring this down. And I'm not counting this time because it's it's more organic now. It's harder for me to just kind of see it and go with it. Turn clipping back on. Grab that vertice and put it where I want it. And then extrude. Come on, there you go. And then face. And then grab this, move it up a little bit. All right, so these two vertices kind of tend to complement each other. And so what I'll probably do is in between those three, or sorry, those two vertices, I have one, two, three, four. Come on, three, four. Anyway, you see a one, two, three, four. Ah, oh, geez. And then I also have the one, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. So what I'll have to do is I'll move this over and then highlight those two, W, subdivide and then since we have a little bit more detail in there we might as well take advantage of it so I'll go like that and then as soon as we get those vertices selected I just promise I've clicked them my computer's just being slow we will we'll do the grid method again to add that grid um, obviously this is a lot faster when you have a computer that cooperates with you when you're not recording a video. Come on. There we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, with one space in the middle. So just remember that you're making a square or a quadrilateral where all the, if this makes sense to you, it makes sense in my head, all the, there's five units on one side, five vertices on one side, five vertices on the other side, one and one. As long as the um, opposing sides are equal, the add grid method will work. And so you just search the grid fill again, and that puts it there. Um, you'll notice, uh, because of the color, you'll see that it's darker. Um, to save time, this, uh, adding vertices and things isn't working as fast as I'd like it to. So I'll just get to the meat and potatoes of what I want to show you. But you'll have to recalculate the normals so that they're, or sorry, flip the normals so that they're facing the same direction as your model, like that. And then um, once you're done with the sculpting part, you can just go ahead and, uh, sorry, apply that modifier. Now it's just the same, whatever. Um, then you're going to add a shrink wrap modifier you're going to target the cube like that and if you were to just do that you'd have 
uh, this kind of result right here. Maybe I can zoom in on it for you. Where um, right now the algorithm works so that it just puts the vertex that we're working with closest to the nearest surface. And this is good for if you want to go along and follow and just keep it right below the surface. But if you're going to be doing um, this kind of stuff where you're facing the right direction, you have it in perspective or sorry, orthographic mode, you can do it in project like this. And what that will do is it acts like a band-aid. And so if we go into the um, side mode by pushing the three on the number pad, G to grab it along the Y axis, and then you pull it over, it'll peel itself on until all the pieces are on top of it. Now we can go ahead and hide that cube and you'll see that even though your object is right here, the polygon stayed behind and sat right there. Um, you can put on the, uh, the smooth shading to make it kind of look just a little bit better. And now uh, your polygon model, as you can see, we have s only um, 68 vertices in this area where with the cube if I were to show you on it there's obviously a lot more than 65 I mean we're already at 26,000 um, just from the head and the, the chest where we selected uh, so it's a really quick way to clean up your model um, it's quicker if your mouse works and will click on things and because when you're not recording video and so just to recap what we did was we sculpted out this model, and you could do it with a car, you could do it with a face, you could do it with whatever you wanted. Um, we switched to the front view of it, and we added a plane here. And I mean, we can still just, since we haven't applied this modifier yet, we can still grab it and you can still see it. It's just a, just a regular plane that follows the contours of the features of his body, and now then we put it on the project mode um, and uh, these axes sometimes you'll notice when you pull it in it might instead of sticking to the front it might start to stick to the undersides and not the front which will obviously not make it good it's, it's even worse than if you just put it on the nearest vertex mode but um, changing the axis will solve that uh, Anyway, if you have any questions about this method or if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see in a future tutorial, uh, please comment below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe and I hope that you have a good time using this method and that it saves you a lot of time in your future projects. Thanks for watching.